Hi everyone, my name is Bridges. Welcome to my channel Code with B. In this video, we are going to talk about AES algorithm. We have already talked about DES algorithm in my previous video. If you haven't gone through that video, please do it now. So AES algorithm is much more safe than DES algorithm. And in 2001, it was considered as the standard for the symmetric key encryption. So how does AES is much more impactful than DES algorithm? So there are various reasons. One is the mathematical algorithm behind the AES algorithm plus the key size. In the DES algorithm, the key size is 64 bits. Out of those 64 bits, 8 bits are the parity bits. That means only 56 bits are there which are involved in the encryption process. So how does this key size matter? Suppose we have a key which has length 1, okay, because these are the binary number. If the key size is 1, that means there are only two possible combinations of the key, which could be either 0 or 1. Any data which is being encrypted using these keys and we don't know the key, but we know the possible combination of the keys. In this particular case, there are only two cases. So I can try with 0 or I can try with 1 to decrypt the data. But if the key size is increasing, say it is 2, there are total 2 h power 2 possible combination which means 4 possible combinations. So we would need maximum 4 tries to actually decrypt the data. If the key size is increasing, say for the DES algorithm, the size is 56. So we have got 2 h power 56. So this 2 h power 56 is a very huge number which is somewhere around 72 quadrillion. So when DES algorithm came into picture, it was impossible to decrypt the data using any brute force attack because of this huge number. But in 1998, the company named Electronic Frontier Foundation was able to identify the key using the brute force attack in like 22 hours. There was needed a new algorithm which could make the data secure. So then came the AES algorithm with the different key sizes of the AES algorithm. Until now, there is no known attack. So AES is still considered as the safest algorithm in the symmetric key encryption. There are three possible combination of the keys. One is 128 bits, 192 bits and 256 bits. As we have learned in the DES algorithm to do any operation on the data to make it secure, there are various rounds. For the AES algorithm, there are different kind of round. For the key size of 128 bits there are total 10 rounds similarly for 192 bits there are 12 rounds and for 256 bits there are 14 rounds in every round we have got these steps the first step is sub byte which is substitution Then shift rows and the mix column, which is basically the permutation. And then finally add round key, which is basically combining the result of the current round plus the key. We have one initial key that is what we have got here, which is K0 and we have got the data D0. Then both of these data are joined together and that becomes the input for the first round. Similarly, in each round, we have sub bytes, shift rows and mix column step. And finally, whatever data we have received over here, this data will be joined with the key for that particular round. So we have got the initial key K0 and for every round we need another key. That means total we need 11 keys. Similarly, for 192 bits, we need 13 keys, 14 rounds we need 15 keys. So for every round we need different kind of keys. Those keys are generated using the key expansion algorithm. I'll explain about the key expansion in the next video. For now, let's focus on the specific rounds. So here we have got couple of rounds. For each round, first of all, we need the initial data, initial key, we draw it together we get the input and that input is passed to the individual round. After the completion of the first round, this data goes to the next round. So here we have got the next round RI plus 1. 
for the next round the output of the first round becomes the input for the next round this process happens until the ninth round in the tenth round which is our final round for 128 bits the sub byte step and the stripped rows happens but this mixed column doesn't happen for the tenth round whatever data we have received after the shift of rows that will be stored with the round key of the 10th round and then we get our cipher text let's take the example here after the storing of the d0 and the k0 we have got the input which is the 16 bytes here i have represented these bytes in the hexadecimal form so this is the first byte and that's the last byte if i have to represent this bytes in the form of matrix so the matrix looks like this so this is our input state matrix where every column represent one so the first column represent first four bytes second column represent next four bytes and so on so this is also called the word zero word one word two and word three uh, the specific word is of four bytes that is 32 bits now i'll explain all of these step one by one let's talk about sub bytes the sub byte is the substitution of the bytes whatever value we have here will be replaced by some other value for that replacement we need a lookup table this lookup table is also called as sbox in case of as algorithm every block represents one byte so whatever byte we have here we need to replace this byte with another byte so this one two will be replaced by some other eight bits so the lookup table is the 16 cross 16 matrix where every block represents one byte so if i have to represent the s box so that will be like 0 1 2 3 4 up to 15 and similarly we have 0 1 2 3 up to 15 so we have this matrix and the values in this matrix are fixed value which are calculated based on some mathematical computations to make this thing secure now we have this one two there are two values the first value is the row and the second value is the column so now we have to find out the first row and second column from this lookup table we have two values over here the first value is the row and the second value is the column so we have to find out the first row and the second column so in the s box we have the first row and we have the second column so assume this value is 32 so we are not looking at the actual value but we are just having some random values over here so now this 1 2 will be replaced by 32 so here if i just create another matrix so 1 2 is 32 similarly we have 2 8 which is the second row and the eighth column somewhere here and assume this value is 64 so this 28 will be replaced by 64 similarly every individual value from here will be replaced by some other value so this was a substitution but after substitution if you see we have got this 18 value which is replaced by 42 we have 18 over here as well so this will be replaced by 42 in this case though our actual values are converted into some other value but still the conversion is into the same value we need to add diffusion over here so that the same value will be converted into different value to make it less predictable for adding the diffusion we have shift rows and mixed columns now we will see how shift row work shift rows basically works on the rows and it shifts the data of the row data shifting happen based on some offset values for the shifting the offset is defined by the row number by offset i mean how many bytes has to be shifted so here we have got this zeroth row first row second row and the third row first row will not be impacted so we have got the 32 64 38 and 42 for this row there will be shift by one byte that means 31 will be shifted to the first position and so will every individual value over here and the first value will go to the last 
and for this row there will be two byte shift so 2f will come to the first position similarly 78 then comes the 35 and then the 51 for the last row 72 will come at the first position then 34 then 67 and the 14 this is what our shift rows in this shift row we have shuffled the values in the row right but all of these values in the first row still remain in the first row the values of the second row remains in the second row and so for the next rows for making the more jumbling up of this data we have the third step which is called the mix column the mix column will jumble up the data within the column so basically the data which we have here will be jumbled up and this will be converted into some other value so if you see here we have got this data this data is say 32 31 2f and 72 so we have to replace this data with some other data so that this whole column will have some different value so here for the mix column we need to mix up all of these column which is a four cross one matrix we have to mix up these column with some other values for that matrix multiplication comes into picture here if you see we have a four cross one matrix and we need to multiply this matrix with some other matrix to get our four, four cross one matrix so that this whole column will be replaced by some other values right so this is 4 cross 1 and we need the output of 4 cross 1 for the matrix multiplication there is a rule so which is basically m cross p this is one matrix and then the another matrix p cross n if you want to multiply these two matrix it will result into the m cross n matrix but the rule is that the p has to be common so basically these are the rows of the first matrix and the column of the first matrix rows of the second matrix and column of the second matrix that means the column of first matrix should match the column of second matrix so in our case we need a 4 cross 1 matrix which is m is 4 n is 1 and so we have a matrix of 4 cross 1 we have this matrix 4 cross 1 so our n is 1 p is 4 right so we need a matrix of 4 cross 4 to get matrix of 4 cross 1 4 cross 4 matrix is a fixed value matrix so the 4 cross 4 matrix has a value this is 2 3 1 1 1 2 3 1 1 1 2 3 3 1 1 2 now this matrix will be multiplied by this matrix and we will get our final values after the mix column for the matrix multiplication if i have a 2 cross 2 matrix and 2 cross 1 matrix for example uh, and this matrix has a value 0 and 1 2 and 3 okay uh, so this is one matrix and the other matrix has a value 2 and 3 if you need to multiply this matrix first row first column will be multiplied by the first row first column the first row second column will be multiplied by second row first column okay so in this case 0 cross 2 plus 1 cross 3 this is the value of first column first row similarly 2 will be multiplied by 2 and 3 will be multiplied by 3 so here the 2 cross 2 plus 3 cross 3 so eventually it becomes 3 and 13 so we have got this 3 cross 13 values if we multiply this matrix with this column then we will get the value which are dependent on the matrix itself and the columns also so after multiplication suppose we have got some values and this is this is after the multiplication of this 4 cross 4 and the specific columns the first column these values with the multiplication of the second column we get these values with third column we will get this and fourth we will get this this is our final matrix this 32 is being converted to 55 55 is just not dependent on 32 but it is also dependent on these all values and this first row similarly the next value is dependent on all of these values plus the second row and so on so there is no one to one mapping but this makes the data to be unpredictable so now we have got the mix column final thing is the add round key so this was the first round that we were talking about now we need to add the round key 
so basically we have the key k1 we have this data this data will be drawn and this becomes our d1 now this is the input for the next round same process will be applied and after the ninth round we have got the tenth round in the tenth round the sub byte which is basically uh, substitution will happen then the shift approach this will happen but this mix column step won't be applied and simply whatever output we have got from here will be added with the round key and that will become our cipher text at the time of decryption the same step will be followed same keys will be applied only different will be in the individual step like shift rows the shifting here is happening toward the left but in case of decryption it will be toward the right more or less the algorithm will remain same this is all about the rounds of the aes algorithm in the next video we will talk about the key expansion algorithm we will see how to generate these keys from the given initial key until then happy coding